Hello everyone, welcome to my second video. Today we're going to be talking about curing aging and its relation to overpopulation. I've spent a lot of time researching this topic because overpopulation is by far the most common objection against curing aging. I wanted to be as thorough and objective about the issue as possible. However, I was surprised that during the time I've been researching this topic, I've come to think that the problem of overpopulation is highly overstated. Although who knows, perhaps I'm biased. I personally don't think so, but I will present to you my arguments for why curing aging will not cause a population catastrophe, and you can judge for yourself. However, because there is so much stuff to cover, I've decided to make this video into two parts. One part that discusses the history of the idea of overpopulation, and another video that goes into the arguments for why curing aging will not contribute to overpopulation and why it's such an overstated problem. You can feel free to skip this video and go right into the arguments when I upload it, hopefully soon, but I personally feel that it's important to first know the history of the idea to understand why it's overstated. So where did this idea come from? Who was behind it? And what influence did it have? Overpopulation is a concept that has its roots in the 18th century English scholar Thomas Malthus. Thomas Malthus observed that resources increased incrementally while people reproduced exponentially. Doing the basic math, he estimated that food production from agriculture simply couldn't keep up with the pace of human reproduction. He estimated that during his lifetime, the world was already close to reaching the maximum sustainable population which during the 18th century had reached 1 billion people. He thought that if measures were not taken to curb the birth rates, disasters such as famines and diseases would befall society. He outlined his ideas on population and resources in his famous treatise, An Essay on the Principle of Population. In his essay, he outlined two particularly notable ideas, the Malthusian Trap and the Malthusian Catastrophe. These, ideas are, these two ideas are very, very important as they form the backbone of arguments for overpopulation today. A Malthusian catastrophe is the idea that population growth is determined to dip below the food production by way of a catastrophe such as war or famine, once it had outpaced agricultural production. The Malthusian trap is the idea that a high standard of living in society is not sustainable and would never last because a high standard of living will always lead to an increase in the population growth, thus dipping the standard down in time. Mouth is thereby reasoned that advances in technology could increase a society's standard of living by increasing the amount of resources, but only temporarily. These two ideas, Mouth is contended, would occur together in a cyclical fashion. For example, once a Malthusian catastrophe had occurred in a civilization, a newer generation would take over to do the same mistake again, and then another generation after that, and so on and so on. This cycle is cheerfully termed the cycle of misery. So with all these ideas in mind, Malthus had very much opposed to giving government relief, such as food or shelter, to the poor. Raising the standard of living for the poor, he argued, would make them have bigger families, which increased their numbers and only continued the cycle of misery. His ideas had some influence over the British government during his lifetime, as well as other contemporary scholars. It was in fact what partially caused the Irish potato famine. The Irish potato famine was given that name because about one third of the Irish population at the time was reliant on farming cheap potatoes as crops. During this famine, about one million people died and another million left Ireland, causing the Irish population to fall considerably. The cause of the potato famine was a fungus known as the potato blight, 
which ravaged potato crops throughout Europe in the, in the 1840s. However, its impact on Ireland was the most severe. Other reasons, such as land acquisition, absentee landlords, the Corn Laws, as well as Malthus's ideas to a lesser extent, contributed to the famine. Application of Malthus's idea of population expanding exponentially, while resources increase incrementally, was popular during the famines of 1817 and 1822. By the 1830s, they were seen as overly simplistic, and Ireland's problems were seen less as an excess of population than as a lack of capital investment. By then, it was already too late, as by that time, one million people had already died from starvation and disease, and another million decided to immigrate from Ireland. After the famine, Malthus's ideas were mostly forgotten because, besides misidentifying the cause of the famine, most of his ideas and predictions, the Malthusian catastrophe and trap in particular, failed. They failed for a multitude of reasons, but most notably because he did not take into account one very important factor, the increase in technology. Malthus thought that the world was already nearing the maximum population limit and it was at the cusp of disaster, but he may not have been aware of the industrial revolution that was happening around him and which began even before he wrote his treatise. During the industrial revolution, which according to most scholars began in 1760, technology was radically changing and the total world population had moved from 1 billion to 6 billion people. Despite this massive increase in the population, there was no shortage in resources. The greater use of machinery and factories in the production of food ensured that there was more than enough for everyone. Instead of doing everything the old-fashioned way by hand, the use of machinery and technology in agriculture, such as the seed drill and animal husbandry, greatly multiplied what each factory and farm worker could produce. Thanks to these technologies, farms now needed fewer farmers to produce food, and with so many farmers still around, this caused a massive increase in food production more than ever before, which made the possibility of a Malthusian catastrophe very unlikely, and Malthus's early prediction that food only increased incrementally simply untrue, as food production far outpaced the accelerating human reproduction. Later on, as the Industrial Revolution continued to modernize Europe, there was no longer so much need for agricultural labor. People moved from the farms to industrial cities where they discovered less need for large families than on the farms, where children helped with the planting, harvest, and other chores. Also since health conditions improved, child mortality declined. People discovered that they had no need for large families to compensate for some of their children dying young. Besides this, the standard of living had actually increased, with more people making more money than they did before, despite the rapid population explosion. Some economists contend that since the Industrial Revolution, mankind has broken out of the Malthusian trap. However, others argue that the continuation of extreme poverty indicates that the Malthusian trap continues to operate. So now that we understand a bit of the history behind the idea, we can go ahead now and define what overpopulation really means. We can clearly see that overpopulation is not an issue of overcrowdedness, as in too many people in one area that causes, for example, difficulty in maintaining personal space. Overpopulation would be more accurately defined as an issue of there not being enough resources or resources that are not allocated properly due to there being too many people. This is an important distinction to make because I see a lot of people discussing overpopulation as a spatial issue, as the word overpopulation itself tends to invoke imagery of crowdedness. You may even argue that cities nowadays are indeed very crowded, and this must be a sign of overpopulation, but it's not. Population density, which is the number of people in a given area, is not the same as overpopulation, which is the lack of resources due to a population being higher than its food production. Crowded cities are more an issue of infrastructure, convenience, and resources being concentrated in one particular area. There is, in fact, plenty of space in the world. Something like 90% of the world is uninhabited, 
and it's been said that the entire 7 billion world population can fit comfortably in the state of Texas. So, again, overpopulation is not a space problem. There's plenty of space on Earth, not to mention the entire galaxy. Overpopulation would be more accurately termed a resource shortage or resource allocation problem. And the main resources we're talking about when it comes to overpopulation would be energy, such as electricity or petroleum, housing and infrastructure, water, and food. Now that we've defined what we really mean by overpopulation, we can continue with the history of the concept.